another county COVID case. Record high levels recorded again for Lake Michigan. Details on payments to farmers coming soon. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Thursday, May 14th, 2020. Another Sheboygan County resident has tested positive for the COVID-19, raising the total number of cases so far to 69. 13 of those cases are active and one is hospitalized with the coronavirus infection. 63 persons in all were tested <laughs> in the last 24 hours. Statewide, 4,654 tests were administered since Tuesday with 291 of those returning positive results. Three more persons died, a relatively low number compared to most days past. And although still tragic, at least another small reason for hope. The percentage of positive test returns edge up to 6.3%, but that was not enough to interrupt how the state determines the trends required to implement phase one of the Badger Bounce Back program to reopen the state. The only remaining indicator of the six required metrics is the downward trajectory of influenza-like illnesses reported within a 14-day period. Although there has been slight improvement during the period, it was not measured as statistically significant enough to move the bar. The Wisconsin Department of Health Services has begun releasing identifying information concerning investigations that took place at long-term care facilities non-healthcare workplaces, group housing facilities, healthcare facilities, and other settings. Sheboygan County has had four investigations in all, three at long-term care facilities and one at a healthcare facility. The state DHS also noted that two of those investigations of nursing homes are still underway in Sheboygan County. Rocky Knoll Healthcare Center and Sunny Ridge Nursing and Rehabilitation Center are the only facilities identified. While a single assisted living facility investigated will remain unnamed according to the County Division of Public Health, County DPH went on to explain that according to the Wisconsin Department of Health Services, names of facilities other than skilled nursing facilities are not released by the DHS and that it is up to local health departments whether public safety remains it makes it necessary to release any further information. Additionally, individual facilities connected with public health investigations may not be named because of strategies employed by the health department to protect the community, also seek to ensure the privacy of the individuals and their families. As COVID-19 dominates most thoughts these days, the American Red Cross is encouraging healthy persons to keep another thought in mind. Donate blood. Blood and platelets are needed every day and donations are a way to care for others during the pandemic. The Red Cross explained that each blood drive and donation center follows the highest standards of safety and infection control. Social distancing and face coverings for all donors and staff are in place for protection. And as a thank you for helping ensure a stable blood supply, all who come to give blood or platelets May 15th to the 31st will receive a special Red Cross We Are All In This Together t-shirt by mail while supplies last. A blood drive will be held today from 11.30 to 5.30 at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Plymouth. And on Friday, drives will be held from 1 to 6 at Our Lady of the Lake in Random Lake. And from 10 until 3 at the Sheboygan Trades and Labor Hall in 11th and Wisconsin. No final decisions have yet been made by Sheboygan County Governor government to issue orders that would replace safer at home. When the Wisconsin Supreme Court struck down the extension of Governor Evers' executive order as unconstitutional, 
it was left up to local governments to issue their own restrictions to control the spread of COVID-19. Dane County issued just such an order immediately after the Supreme Court ruling, and Sheboygan County Administrator Adam Payne responded to email questions from WHBL News late last night, saying that the court's order is being re reviewed and legal counsel is being sought. He said, fortunately, we started preparing for a contingency plan for this possibility and have guidelines and best practices that we can disseminate very consistent with a lot of guidance that has already been shared. Meetings will be held this morning, but at this juncture, no final decisions have been made in how Sheboygan County will respond. Payne said all public and private organizations will need to be mindful of social distancing and other best practices in order to protect their employees and customers alike. The sky is not falling, he said. Those hoping to experience the fine arts that enrich Sheboygan living will have to wait until the pandemic eases. Jamie Hack, marketing director for the John Michael Kohler Arts Center, says in a release statement today that the John Michael Kohler Arts Center has made the decision to postpone all public programs and special events at John Michael Kohler Arts Center through July 19th. This includes the Midsummer Festival of the Arts and the Levitt Amp Sheboygan Music Series concerts. Be assured, protecting the health and safety of our community and visitors throughout the ongoing public health crisis remains our highest priority. She continued that a decision about proceeding with the second half of the summer concert series will be made in June. And John Michael Kohler Arts Center is exploring ways to share the work of musicians and visual artists online. Hawk said that an announcement about reopening and reinstating public programming will be made once more details are known. Governor Tony Evers is nearly ready to release details about the state's direct payments to farmers using federal coronavirus relief money. We are very, very close, the governor said. And I'd say within a day or two of announcing that, what the whole package will look like. Obviously, dairy and agriculture will be a priority. Evers says Wisconsin has received the $1.9 billion in Federal CARES Act funding. The governor appeared on Dairy Signal podcast hosted by the Professional Dairy Producers of Wisconsin on Tuesday, where he told producers he is still consulting with agricultural leaders before releasing details of the plan. And finally, it is not surprising to those who have lives tied to Lake Michigan, record high water levels have been set again. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineer and Tuesday said Tuesday that Lake Michigan, Huron, St. Clair, and Erie set new monthly mean water level records for April, breaking those previously set in 1985 or 86. All of the lakes are either in their period of seasonal rise or reaching their peak heading into the lake spring or su and summer. Most seasonal rise can be attributed to rainfall and runoff, and despite a wet end to April, recent dry weather has moderated that rise. Still projections are for continued near or above record high levels for now, threatening significant erosion and flooding for many locations. With those still rising ahead, the Army Corps Emergency Manager Pat Kuhn advises that any community or individual homeowner that needs assistance should protecting their property should contact their county or local emergency manager, who will then coordinate them with the Army Corps for assistance. And that is our report for today. Join me again on Tuesday for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.